Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation. We have dy over dx equals y plus x. y is a function of x and we're going to be solving for y values. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to use an infinite polynomial, also known as a power series. So we're going to go ahead and set y equal to a sub 0 plus a sub 1x plus a sub 2x squared, so on and so forth. It's just going to go on forever. So basically we're going to multiply a sub k by x to the power k. So we can also express this using the sigma notation, sigma k equals 0 to infinity, a sub k, x to the power k. So by starting k at 0, we're getting the first term as a constant. Make sense? And then you can go ahead and just differentiate this. So there is a couple different ways to do it. You can just differentiate it in the you know, uh, polynomial form, and that's going to give you the derivative of a sub 0 is going to be 0 because it's a constant. The derivative of a sub 1x is just a sub 1. The derivative of a sub 2x squared is 2a sub 2x. And then you're going to get a sub 3x cubed, and its derivative is going to be 3a sub 3x to the second power, and so on and so forth. Or, if you wanted to differentiate this in the sigma form, then you could go ahead and do the following. This k, you're going to move it to the front. That's going to become k a to the k, but then you have to reduce the power. Since the power was reduced, you can't start the k at 0 anymore. The minimum k has to be 1, because for k equals 0, you're going to get an x to the power of negative 1, which doesn't make sense at all, right? Great. So, however you express it, I'm going to use the first notation. It's kind of like a little easier, because with the second one, you kind of need to play with the indices. Uh, for example, we have x to the k here and x to the power uh, k minus 1. So, you kind of have to set them equal so that you can factor out a common factor, so on and so forth. So, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and plug these into my equation. One of the nice things about um, using power series is some equations cannot be solved in other ways and power series is always going to provide a solution. The problem is you get a series at the end which may not be expressible as uh, a you know, series of elementary functions. Anyways, let's go ahead and see how this proceeds. We're going to go ahead and go back to the original equation y prime is equal to y plus x. Y prime could also be expressed as dy over dx, as you should hopefully know. But anyways, we're going to replace y prime with this, a sub 1 plus 2a sub 2x plus 3a sub 3x squared, and then that's going to go on forever. And that should equal y, which is a sub 0 plus a sub 1x plus a sub 2x squared, and then dot, dot, dot. But notice that we're also adding an x here. Makes sense? So we have a sub 1x plus an additional x, which obviously brings things a little bit uh, to a different level. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put everything on the same side and set this whole thing equal to zero. What does it mean for an infinite polynomial to be equivalent to zero for all x values? It just means that the coefficient of uh, all the coefficients are going to be zero. Makes sense? Except, there's an exception you'll see in a little bit. So which side is better to use? Since x is positive on this side, actually no big deal. You can do either side. But I'm going to go ahead and put everything on the right hand side. I don't know why, but I, I want to do it that way. So we're going to subtract a sub 1 from a sub 0. We're going to subtract term by term. So we're going to subtract these two things. That's going to give me a sub 1 minus 2a sub 2x. So just subtract the coefficients. And then we're going to subtract from a sub 2 this one which is 3a sub 3x squared. But of course, I have to subtract the coefficients first, and then I'm going to multiply the whole thing by x squared. Make sense? And then, don't forget, you still have the x at the end. So what you can do with that x is, you can go ahead and plug it in here, so I kind of add that to the equation, and that's just going to bring a plus 1x. So let's do it. a sub 1 minus a sub, a sub 0 minus a sub 1, plus a sub 1 minus 2a sub 2 plus 1, because the whole thing is going to be multiplied by x. And notice that we're bringing the x over here. And then the same thing, right? 
And now we no longer have the x, so it's just going to be dot, dot, and dot. Okay. And this is equal to zero because we brought everything to the same side. We subtracted them and they were equal, so the difference is zero. Make sense? This is the nice part because you're going to be kind of um, unwrapping a huge thing. This is an infinite polynomial and every coefficient is supposed to be zero. Everyone including the constant. So this is supposed to be zero. This is supposed to be zero. This is supposed to be zero. And of course, the next one and the next one, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and write this down. Obviously, we do not know what a sub zero is. And I think we'll never know one unless uh, we are given initial conditions, which weren't given for this problem. And that's OK. Undetermined coefficients. And here's what we're going to do. First of all, from the first equation, a sub zero and a sub one are equal. I want to express everything in terms of a sub zero because that's my constant, right, in the original y. So let's write down a sub one as a sub zero because they are equal. And then we're going to go ahead and work with each of these. For example, the second equation is going to give me a sub one minus two a sub two plus one is equal to zero. I'm going to go ahead and replace a sub one with a sub zero minus two a sub two plus one is equal to zero. If you go ahead and put these two things on the right hand side, from here, actually, you can go ahead. Actually, I have a better idea. Let's go ahead and isolate a sub 2 here and divide both sides by 2. That's better. And now from here, we're going to get a sub 2 equals a sub 0 plus 1 divided by 2. And let's continue one more time, and then you'll get the pattern, hopefully, and then I'll tell you what happens. So from the third equation, which is this one, I'm getting a sub 2 is equal to 3 a sub 3, or I want to write this as a sub 3 equals a sub 2 divided by 3. But this is a sub 2. Notice that? So I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by 3, but it's already divided by 2, so it's basically going to divide by 2 times 3. And I want to keep it that way. I don't want to write 6 because I want to see the pattern, which you already hopefully know. And then the next one is just going to be from here a sub 3 minus 4, a sub 4 is 0. Let's go ahead and write that down. Even though I haven't shown it, you are hopefully going to get it from there. And from here, we can safely say that a sub 4 is a sub 3 divided by 4. But we already have an expression for a sub 3. So a sub 4 is just going to be the same thing divided by 4, which is 2 times 3 times 4. You get the idea? The denominators are factorials. Numerator is the same. It's always a sub 0 plus 1. It's a constant. You can call it something else, but guess what? Let's not do it because we're going to do something awesome, which is separation. Okay, let's get it done. Now, now is the time to plug in everything. Remember, y was a sub 0 plus a sub 1x plus a sub 2's x squared, so on and so forth, right? This was my expression. Now, let's go ahead and write everything in terms of a sub 0. a sub 1 is... Same as a sub 0, so I'm just going to write a sub 0. a sub 2 is a sub 0 plus 1 divided by 2 factorial, and we're going to multiply by x squared. And then a sub 3 is a sub 0 plus 1 divided by 2 times 3, which is 3 factorial, times x cubed, and so on and so forth. You get the idea? Okay, great. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to subtract uh, or separate this into two pieces, like this. a sub 0 divided by 2 factorial times x squared plus x squared over 2 factorial. Now, why is this important? Because this should give you something nice. And of course, this is also going to give you something nice with an additional factor of a sub 0. And all these terms have a sub 0, so I can go ahead and do the following. a sub 0, take out, this is my y, 1 plus x from here. And then from here, we're going to get notice that a sub 0 was already taken out, so I'm going to write x squared divided by 2 factorial from here and then plus a cubed over 3 factorial i'm not considering this one yet and then this will continue plus plus you're going to have other pieces like x squared over 2 factorial x cubed over 3 factorial and so on and so forth so those are going to be basically coming from here and here and so on and so forth make sense so i kind of split it up forgive me for skipping one step hopefully you can figure that out but guess what this is just amazing because this whole thing here is the power series for e to the power x. Isn't that amazing? Yes, you'll see why in a little bit, but we can go ahead and write it like this. What about the second piece? Well, it's the same thing except it's missing x and 1. So it's actually e to the power x minus x minus 1. Isn't that cool? 
we just uh, we're just missing those so we have to subtract them so that would be the solution right wait a minute what is that supposed to mean I don't know a sub 0 it's okay you can go ahead and write this as a sub 0 plus 1 e to the x minus x minus 1 kind of put together things and then let's go ahead and call this c shall we for constant so our expression can be expressed as y equals c to c times e to the x minus x minus 1 this should be the solution but the second method will verify that in an interesting way okay let's go ahead and talk about the second method again our equation is y prime equals y plus x we're going to differentiate both sides until everything disappears, pretty much, almost. Differentiate once, you're going to get y prime, and the derivative of x is 1. Differentiate one more time, y triple prime, you're going to differentiate y prime, which is going to give you y double prime, which is the second derivative. The derivative of 1 is 0. We're good because all the constants disappeared. Well, what does it mean for a function whose third derivative equals its second derivative. Wait a minute. Isn't the second derivative the derivative of the derivative and the derivative is just the derivative of the function? Okay, what am I talking about? Okay, here's what I'd like to do. I want to set the second derivative equal to u because the third derivative is the derivative of the second derivative. Does that make sense? Y triple prime is y double prime prime. Therefore, it's just u prime. Awesome. This gives us u prime equals u. Substitution works, it's awesome. And we're looking for a function whose derivative equals itself. Come on, you already know that, right? Isn't it e to the power x? With a constant, it's going to be c e to the x. Now, here's the fun part. From here, we're going to find y. How? By integrating. Remember, u was obtained from y triple prime or double prime, whatever. We're just going to, wait a minute, what is u? u is y double prime. So let's go ahead and back substitute that. And now we're going to integrate, so go backwards, right? That's how you can reverse differentiation. Integrate once, you're going to get y prime, which is obviously the integral of c to the x is itself, but uh, the integral of 0 is just a constant, so let's go ahead and write this as k. And then uh, integrate one more time, this is going to stay the same, but the integral of k is just kx, and then another constant pops up. What? Wait a minute, why is this different from the first method? Because we're not done. So the next thing is subbing. Okay, remember, we do know something about y. What is that? y prime is y plus x. Let's go ahead and differentiate this once. Remember, we obtained this by integration, so a new constants came in. Now, if you differentiate this, you're going to get c e to the x plus k. And then if you differentiate one more time, you're going to get c e to the x. Wait a minute, do we really need the second derivative? No, not really. So let's forget about it. I don't know why I differentiate one more time, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to plug these in. y is equal to this, and y prime is equal to that, and y prime is supposed to be y plus x. Let's go ahead and plug it in, shall we? y prime is c e to the x plus k, and that's equal to y, which is c e to the x plus kx plus m plus x. This is where the constants come in. And this is going to be just awesome because you're going to get k plus 1 multiplied by x plus m. Now notice that this is true for all values of x in the domain and it's just a set of real numbers. These two cancel out, we don't care about them, but here there's no x on the left hand side so this must be 0 and the constant is k plus the constant is m so m equals k. So we get k equals negative 1, that's equal to m as well. And now we can go ahead and write the y with the determined coefficients y was c to the x plus kx plus m, c to the x plus kx plus m. So our y value is just going to be c to the x. Still, we don't know c, too bad, but k is negative 1 and m is negative 1. And guess what? This is the exact same thing we found with the first method. Shh, don't tell anyone. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. And I apologize. This was a long video, but I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.